This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. train there it goes there it goes there goes the train it is the awesome cast episode 424 it's time to get geeky get awesome i'm mike sorgat sorgatron on the twitter here in the sorgatron media studios in beachview neighborhood of pittsburgh pa uh ready to talk tech with you out there and with my compatriot here here in studio is john chichilla at chill on the twitter he's a gadget guru over at big bank international esquire Hey, how's it going tonight? Good. You got the, the you have at least a little corner of Christmassy. We're going to try to get more decorations, can, can but you, you got a little bit of tree behind. There's me? a little bit of blinky oh, there's tree. A little bit some some blinking. It's a little bit of blinky going on. Just just enough just enough Christmas to say so. Uh, so, but now we're we're gearing up here for the end of the year and trying to um um trying to uh, uh you know make it festive here. Uh, the tree is up. It's off the on the other side. The tree is up. There are no lights. I put a hat on it. So it's not cold. <laughs> it's not cold. <laughs> but anyways, this is the awesome cast, and uh, we're going to get into it. Uh, thank you, everybody, joining us out there in the chat room on Facebook Live. And, of course, we're a bunch of other places like the Sorgatron Media Periscope and Twitch page and so much more. Uh, thank you, people are joining us there, including Brian Crawford and Dave Podner. And producer Missy is joining us out on Sorgatron Media West offices. But you can uh, join us here live every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, on the Facebook Live is where we uh, for Fa- awesome cast is where we do pay attention to the chat room. You guys can join us over there, and all the likes are going on. Thank you, Brian, for that, and everybody else out there. Um, you can also check us out at awesomecast.com, where you can find uh, old episodes, subscribe, and all the awesome chat interviews that we've done over the years. And uh, at awesomecast on the Twitter. Uh, Facebook. Uh, we look for the Facebook group. We have a lot of uh, uh, conversations happening in there. A few of the stories we'll be talking about here later in the show are a part of that. And also, thank you to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com. They carry us every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And, of course, that's the music if you join us on our live stream that you hear while we're getting set up. And uh, also our uh, our friends over on the West Coast, the 405, 405media.com, where they carry us weekdays at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time. I need more coffee, I'm discovering. Uh, also, uh, thank you to everybody that's uh, supporting us um, on the Patreon. And, of course, all of our advertisers, if anybody wants to be here, part of the studio, or advertise with us. We have a few new ones we'll be talking about later in the show. You can hit up uh, Producer Missy over at AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com today. Thank you to our Patreon supporters at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast at the Coffee Club $5 level. We're going to talk about Chilla's worries about joining um, the Nintendo service for $20 a year. And his weird hang up about that. Uh, and uh, that's going to be going out to our friends Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore and our friend of the fan of the show, $1 level uh, Michael Fedor, who's who's anxiously awaiting his, awaiting his Christmas cookies this year. <laughs> so uh, I saw on Twitter the other day. So I wasn't sure if we were going to do the, like the full delivery thing. We're actually thinking about doing a Christmas party for everybody. But uh, more details coming soon uh, for those as well. Um, and of course you guys can support us and help keep the lights on here at Sogertron Media Studios at patreon.com slash awesome cast. If you're digging, uh, what's going on here, get some behind the scenes content and, uh, so much more. So let's get into the awesome thing of the week. Mine's a little old school. So I think I want to go with you here, uh, first Chilla. So I, I, I found a bunch of somewhat awesome topics. So I had to go off book. And while this isn't a guaranteed, this isn't something that's been released yet, but it's been something that's been rumored for quite some time. So, so this is awesome speculation. Yeah, this is awesome spec. Yeah, 
but, but which, I feel like we I, should do, we should just do like an awesome spot. Like that's kind of the end of the year show, isn't it? I feel like it's the, it it's it's the device that I think a lot of people would appreciate, mm-hmm. and I could see actually disrupting the industry, much like the iPad did when it was released. So Microsoft's been and and. Microsoft's been working on a foldable surface type device. We've we've heard from Samsung and their device, their their phone type device that'll fold into a tablet. Um, there's Microsoft has codenamed theirs Centaurus. Um, it'll be a dual screen computer powered by Windows Core OS. Hmm. And I think people have been hearing about uh, Microsoft's codename Andromeda, which is I think the the um, code name for the operating system itself, which was running behind, which is why they're saying this device hasn't been released just yet. But from from what I hear, if you've ever seen the movie Westworld, the kind of foldable device that they all carry around, like is their compute device that like fits inside of like the. We, we've had this Jacket discussion pocket. before because I didn't think it was like a folded thing. I thought it was just like like a clear iPad kind of situation. The one from from Westworld. No, because the in the one episode, I mean, he like pulls it out of the inside of his jacket pocket and unfolds yeah. it like almost yeah. like a book. I guess I didn't. But it just looks really, kind of flat. It, it, it's it was so seamless it kind of fits in the world. Maybe I just don't think about it. Yeah, but that's what I would equate this to. I don't think this is going to be like paper like newspaper foldable. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be more like your typical, almost like a laptop with a, with a hinge type foldable. Um, I'm excited for this type of device personally. And as I, I find myself typing more and more on screens, I can't type nearly as fast as I can on an actual keyboard. But when I'm out and about, even on an iPad, a Surface, or whatever, I find myself not even taking the time to fold the keyboard around. I can just pump out whatever I'm typing yeah. on a flat piece of glass, mm-hmm. and it works just fine. You're used to it by now. It's yeah. kind of like how everybody's like, oh, I want a physical keyboard when we had our all of our smartphones come out, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and really, you can barely find those. Everybody's used to that. They, BlackBerry still makes one. They run an Android. Of course they do, because there's somebody that still needs that. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there are plenty of people that are, you know, hit a certain learning curve point and can't can't, can't get past that. You know, it makes them feel comfortable, and and you know, add a new technology on that on top of it, right? But yeah, and and what I'd like to see with this is something almost like a, like the size of a small, what do they call them, steno pads, like the the metal ring at the top flip notebook type thing. Mm-hmm. Almost something like that side size that you could slide a stylus into kind of like a galaxy note. And I, and I just find that this device would be super useful. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we see this next year. Um, we keep seeing it pop up in news stories and whether they're artist conceptions or, or whatnot, and even other vendors like Lenovo have taken kind of a stab at this type of device. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping that we see more of these hit the industry next year. Well, while you're looking to the future, I'm looking way into the past. Um, I, <laughs> I I dug up some of my old consoles and just I just kind of went to town on some old old you know pulled some old cards, got my Nintendo going, um, discovered I was missing a cord for my my Sega Genesis 32X setup. I uh, got one in from Amazon the other day, and I pulled a cart that I had not played as much as I thought I had. Because I think I sat down with it a few times, kind of got like, what is this? And, you know, had uh, picked it up, I don't know, at a store somewhere, who knows, uh, had an opportunity to. Um, and it's um, Knuckles Chaotix. Now, Knuckles is kind of the secondary character. There's an old Sonic and Knuckles. I think he was debuted in, what, Sonic 3, probably? Back on because the it was Genesis. after Tails, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There were Sonic and Tails. Yeah, then. he was the next guy. And you're, yeah, I, I, I think he was the proto man, if you're so familiar with Mega Man, of uh, of, of the uh, uh, Sonic series. But he got his own game, and he had a lot of friends with him uh, for the 32X. Like you never really got a Sonic the Hedgehog game. I don't think so for the 32X. 
It was um, it, it was this add-on. If you're not unfamiliar, it goes into the cartridge slot of your Sega Genesis, which was a 16-bit system, which then made it a 32-bit system. But little did um, I think Sega America put it out, and little did they know Sega of Japan was doing the Sega Saturn, which was a CD system akin to like the original PlayStation. So the 32X kind of died a very quick death. But it's still, like, I think a really cool part of history. I love the Star Wars arcade game on it and everything. I did get Doom for it, even though it is one of the laughably not great um, versions of Doom. Actually, probably an okay one. Put, probably, can, better than on the, the touch super, bar of a Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> better than the Super Nintendo version, right? So what, When you're saying it went into... So did it go... Was it like a game genie where, like, it slid into it, the cartridge yeah, slot yeah. and then you slid a cartridge Oh, I'm going to have to bring this in. You've never seen one before? I don't know. Oh, geez. Hold on a second. I'm going to have to throw up a picture. But anyways, so yeah, no, it, it goes in. Because like, remember, there was like the Se- the Sega CD would go in under, like you had the one that it sat on top of, like the just sat on top of I remember of it, that's where I was thinking it was, it was something that s- went into the bottom slot. Um, no, no, it's not. Um, although it's funny because I still have the like uh, static guard and open slot from the um, uh, Sega CD. Hold on a second. I need to find a picture of this thing, a good picture of this thing to show you. So we have you and you know, anybody on the video side. Well, if I, I mean, if it was like a game genie, I, I understand the concept. Yeah, I think you got it for the most part. Um, there it is. There, if you got, if you if you're on visual. Oh, it there. was big. Yeah, it was a pretty significant. Like if you, well, I have the original Genesis, but uh, like this kind of gives you an idea of the form factor. So it, it's kind of like this. Um, it's it's like. It's like, you know, the saucer of the Enterprise is, like, docked <laughs> into the rest of it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there there you go. So, yeah, it goes into the, the cartridge slot, but you have to have, like, an AV cord that goes from one system to the other. So that kind of marries them together, and then your AV has to come out of the 32X for it to work. The funny was that part- S-Video coming out of there? Um, or was that some proprietary... It's... Com- well, no, yeah, it's proprietary. It's some weird proprietary pin. It looks like a PS2 with too many pins. Um, PS2 port for a PC. I understand. Anyways, but it's just the, one of those weird, quirky things. And I've been trying to grab a bunch of like yeah, this. They, this is where the Genesis started to do. Like, remember when Sega, Super Nintendo they had like Star Fox, and there was an extra chip in the cartridge, and that's how they started doing like 3D effects and things like mm-hmm. that. This was their Super FX chip. It was a whole different system, basically, that just bumped it up to 32 bits, you know, uh, more or less. And that's where you got, like, Star Wars Arcade. That was really good. And I played a little bit of uh, just the other night. It's a lot of fun still. Um, Knuckles Chaotix was, you know, had some 3D effects, but it was still a Sonic the Hedgehog-style 2D scroller. But the, but it's a little more than that. It's actually a... Um, and here's a little bit of footage for you guys on the video. It's a, this is the uh, bonus level that had a pretty cool kind of uh, 3D tunnel effect. And, they, and they've always had those like kind of half-pipe things when you had Sonic games and everything like that. But the big play on this thing is you are tethered to another character. And you have to do these tandem moves. And this is actually the level I was playing with. Where you like slingshot each other. And that's how you like... You know, how you would, uh, you know, kind of speed up uh, as Sonic and just, like, take off. You, like, hold and power up the ring and it slingshots the other the other character um, along with with you. Are you linked by a link of rings? Or is it like, oh, so, it's like a vine. Yeah, you're each holding on to a ring and there's, like, this sparkly tether thing going on between you. It's at, it, it's at, at, at one point really interesting and at other points really maddening sometimes. <laughs> That's how I would probably find it is maddening. Yeah. It, well, the first time I sat down with it, I was like, I don't get this. And then, like, you have to go through this, like, you know, Sonic was easy. You run. This thing was like, you have to go through the tutorial. Okay, hold, you know, every button, every button was jump before. Yeah. All th- <laughs> yeah. C is jump, B is hold, and pick up your, pick up and throw your friend. Um, the other one is call your friend in case it gets stuck up on a ledge and, and you can't get up there. You know, it, it, and it, it, it like shoots out towards the screen and back at you and your friend is next to you again. <laughs> and, and there's multiple characters. It, it Again, it's and it's not easy for anybody to play this because you have to have a 32X in the cartridge. And these are not really easy to, well, probably easy to find, but still like a pain in the butt, right? Um, there's ROMs, there's emulators. I, I mean, we have an emulator on the RetroPie, and I have a um, uh, WrestleMania the arcade game on there. 
Mm-hmm. So we, that's how I've been playing that. You know, just, you know, it, kind of an interesting thing to check out. This weird little better than Genesis, but not entirely fully developed. And it just whatever games they were working on got out there and that was it. Right. I, there might be like 15 games, maybe. Oh, wow. They up. even had, there were some games that were 32X Sega CD. <laughs> so there were Sega CD games. So you needed that add on. But they also took advantage of the 32X power. On top of it, <laughs> but they oh, would the old world. I remember like, friends that had the Turbo Graphics 16, and then they got the Turbo Graphics CD add-on for that. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think of other game, strange game add-ons for systems. Uh, that was that was the time for it. That's for sure. What but about, the, what was it? The Atari Jaguar mm-hmm. was like touted to be the first 32-bit system, 64-bit. Or 64-bit, and it was two 32-bit processors. They have a, they have a few of those games hanging out over there, uh, over at um, over at the uh, uh, the exchange. I was looking at, so I was like, hmm, um, because I'm a collector. I mean, I'm not like I'm not I'm not somebody that's gonna go like drop seventy dollars for a cartridge. But I love just cleaning out the bar- the, the the bargain basement. Mm-hmm. You know, I just went and picked a bunch of dollar games out of the Game Boy Advance bin. Um, because I realized I had like three Game Boy Advance games and and just play original Game Boys on my Advance, um. So I was like, well, let's 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 get let's play with some more stuff, you know, and and just like weird quirky stuff and kind of find that and 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 sometimes I'll find something I want to play through. Like I, now I want to play through this Knuckles Chaotix game a little bit more, right? It's got a save feature, although I couldn't figure out how to save and lost my <laughs> couple of levels I did already. But oh well, um. No, I think it's I think it's a pretty cool thing, and and one of those it, it was it, it was great that I I thought I was never going to find a 32x cord. There's a bunch of them. although the one I got apparently was great for like the newer Genesises, but not for 32x, and the audio doesn't work. <laughs> but I have original Genesis so that you have has the headphone, jack. the headphone jack in the front. I just plug, <laughs> I just plugged in um some some old uh, iPhone headphones that I had laying there on the desk in the old office and just cranked it up and sat it over by the chair so I could kind of hear what was going on enough to play the game. So, I mean, that's just kind of where I was playing some Maximum Carnage because I love Maximum Carnage. As, as stupid hard as it is, you know, getting as far as I can with that game. Anyways, but that's that's my awesome thing. Just th- digging into the old school right now. Hey, we got some new awesome things that are actually um, supporting the show here this month um something really special is happening uh it's christmas that's special too uh but uh, our good friends over at uh yajagoff.com have this really cool um um hol- holiday gift guide and uh, we're uh, a part of that as well i'm going to tell you about some cool things happening from there first thing i want to talk- tell you about is pittsburgh things chilla do you know about pittsburgh things i don't know about pittsburgh things pittsburgh things as uh, it says right at the ter- top of their website, Pittsburgh themed apparel net. Uh, so uh, go check it. They got a lot of cool stuff over there. Pittsburgh things is simply that Berg best in apparel, including T-shirts and unique garments like dresses, yoga leggings, and even socks featuring Pittsburgh skyline. Look at oh, this is this is. I feel like this is in uh, Katie's future. Is the uh, the uh, Pittsburgh skyline uh, leggings. Um. Yeah, that's definitely something that she would be wearing to, to the show. Uh, but other than that, uh, consider it uh, city city stitches in a wide variety of options, uh, perfect for stocking stuffers and giftables for that yinzer on your list. Uh, Tony designed each piece on the site. Check it out at pittsburghthings.com. Uh, there you go. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, Tony Landolina that actually designs these things. It's a Pittsburgh skyline. I love it. <laughs> and again, a lot of t-shirts and other things going on there. Pittsburghthings.com. Uh, it's, it's a pretty cool spot. I'm going to be looking into that for some uh, Yinzer gifts probably this. Uh, look, you can get a city skyline uh, fashion dress oh, for the cool. ladies. I don't know why I'm just looking at the ladies stuff. Um, it's the most interesting thing. It's like the Pittsburgh skyline stuff. <laughs> so um, that'd be cool to get the skyline socks too. Yinzer with the uh, this is this is a table Slippy of elements table of elements um, Yinzer shirt that for our geeky um, people out there. I think we got a cool. Th- that's that's a nice mix. Uh, go check it out. PittsburghThings.com. Thank you so much for them for supporting the show. 
All right. So we got a lot of things from our Awesome Cast Facebook group um, that were submitted this week. First of all, uh, Dave Potter submits this maybe less than awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I really, I really wish Katie was here so we could talk to her about her tumble. Her, her Tumblr situation um, around this. But apparently... Does, does she have an explicit Tumblr? I'm sure she does. Um, per, uh, so also, per the text, if you are a female with male-presenting nipples, guess you are okay. Uh, ban content includes... Uh, the, uh, t- Tumblr is going to ban all adult content as of December 17th. Um, a quote that uh, uh, Dave included with this article from The Verge. Uh, Banned content includes photos, videos, and gifts of human genitalia, female presenting nipples, and any media involving sex acts, including illustrations. Um, this is a weird spot for them. After all these years, and after uh, Tumblr probably being well past um, relevance, if that's not mean to say, uh, they, they decided to do this. Also, they're already having problems. I added I added the Verge article. This, okay, so what's, what's going on in the Verge? Okay, first thing I saw, photos of dildos had flown under the algorithm's radar. So that's good to know. But but, but photo, photos of vases did, did not. They got flagged as explicit. Vases. Vases and drawings of fish. Interesting. So it's going to be interesting to see. Did, does... Tumblr just become a hay bale floating down the road and, and no one's there anymore. <laughs> Everyone flees to Reddit because that uh-huh. seems to be where people go. If, if, if in fact, everyone's posts just start getting falsely accused of being explicit versus versus other content continuing to be available that is explicit. Mm-hmm. This is all because they got removed from the app store. I don't know if you heard about that. Oh, I didn't know about that. So this is a response to that. Yeah. So one, I think like three, three Sundays ago, they were removed from the Apple app store um, with no quick reason from Apple. Why? And it ended up being, there was some um, illegal pornographic content of children oh on the tumblr site and that's why apple pulled them um they remediated that issue and that now they're taking the next step and saying that no explicit content should be available it'll be interesting to see how this works and if it will cause an issue with their hosting service or will this just end up somewhere out? Will, will everyone leave? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that many people. I, I don't know. Or, if I, or we find out, or the most of the people that are there, the people that are going to have a concern with this. Yeah. So. I, yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not on Tumblr and I don't know if I like, there's some blogs that I read. I, I now I'm wondering like, are they hosted on Tumblr and they're just using a vanity thing and an interesting theme that i would never pick up on the fact they're actually hosted on tumblr i don't know there's a nasa nasa tumblr that's popular oh all those pictures of rockets are gonna get flagged now you watch (laughs) that's gonna be the next story you hear that nasa got flagged on tumblr for pornographic material um this was another one from uh brian crawford uh, he's, you know, of course he's, he's always got a lot of cool stuff going on there. He's always experimenting with things. Um, this is one for, uh, probably along the lines for you here, Chilla. He, um, do, 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 let me get an image over here. Uh, he bought a pair of Eufy light bulbs, uh, for his room. Are you, uh, E-U-F-Y, is that something you're okay, familiar I'm with? Okay, I'm not Shilla? familiar with that brand, okay. but... They work seamlessly with Echo and work with Google Home as well. They were about $10 per bulb. You got my attention. Uh, he loves how they allow him to brighten his room when he wakes up from sleep in the evening since he works overnight. Extremely happy with the purchase. And we got a little bit of video here of um, them in action. And and I don't know, the, the, the camera, I think you see it going like on and off a little bit, but I think the camera is adjusting the exposure. So okay. you're, you're not probably seeing it as stark as it probably is actually in reality. So E-U-F-Y, Ufy uh, light bulbs. Um, look like a pretty worthwhile thing for you to look into. The one thing I find interesting about this is you have to control the bulb. Mm-hmm. 
versus controlling the light switch itself. But for only ten dollars, that's a lot of it. But I have it, to replace the bulbs. Okay. Bulbs don't last forever. But they're ten dollars a bulb. But my light switches were only forty on sale. So here they are. So four, four. I guess four. It'd be interesting to see. Like, are they LED bulbs that are like rated to last like right. twenty years? Um, they are sixty watt equivalent. The ones I just found on Amazon, uh, they're by Anchor, so that's a good maker right mm-hmm. there. Uh, Ufi Lumos smart bulbs by Anchor, turnable, soft white to daylight, twenty seven hundred to sixty five hundred. Wi-Fi dimmable, 9 watt. I don't know what number we'd be looking for to see that they are rated for a, a lot longer. But Usually they have like an hour's estimate. Don't see one here. There's, a, there's uh, another one for eleven ninety nine as well. On the, nice, the nice thing about that, those though is there's no hub required. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally like, oh, I just want a bulb that works. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you're, you're saying you want like the switch to be the hub, right? I want this. Well, and here's why I want the switch to be the hub. So technically, you're still running electricity through that circuit. Mm-hmm. It's just the bulbs turned off. Right. So you have to leave your lights. And this is where I guess I worry because we have there's multiple people in the house. Someone's going to go over and flip the switch. Mm-hmm. Nothing's going to happen. They're going to tell me it's broken. <laughs> like it's like I I don't know like somehow they need to make like switch covers then that cover you from being able to switch the switch. Otherwise, it shuts the bulb completely off and makes it non-usable i can see that i can see that especially if you're putting bulbs in like something that um like like we have lights that have they're like a part of fans and that's like the main light in the in the living room right so how do i separate the fan from the light problem right Right, you know, you, you could at least at least take that cord. Yeah, because it has a pull. Ch- is, yeah, it's like pull one chain. pull chains the fan. It has and a pull, pull chain, chains. but it also has like a massive switch for the entire unit. Right. So I already have that kind of happening, don't I? Right. You know, but just in the summer they're both on, in in winter they're not. I guess is the thing. Right. Yeah. But anyways, um, also, uh, um, Brian also adds, and this is Brian Crawford of the Rivers Edge. We'll give him a shout out while we're out here. Um, it looks like that Amazon is adding the ability to uh, make Skype calls with their <coughs> Echo speakers. I almost said it. I almost said it. You can. You can also. You, you, yeah, and I think it, does the video come through on the dot and stuff like that. I think. It, I, I think it spot, does from the looks of things. Yeah, I think they're pulling the video in too. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So he says that the friendship between uh, Amazon and Microsoft seems to be growing. Amazon knows exactly what the smart screen is for, video conferencing. Google doesn't seem to understand yet. (laughs) You can also call up A-Train through Cortana and uh, vice versa. Uh, I'm interested to see where this partnership continues, says Brian. And then finally, from the uh, group that was submitted here, Awesome Cast Facebook group. Uh, Alex Cars shared with us. Uh, he got. I never heard of this one because I usually get the Mophies. I wanted to grab. I got the Mophie here for the iPhone 5s. That's how we resurrected one with a bad battery without having to go in and you know <laughs> get it replaced. Get it replaced and deal with it right uh, and open this up. I fix it or something. Although the, the battery programs at the uh, Apple stores are not too bad these days. Um, but he picked up a Power Bear. Uh, <laughs> a power bear uh, battery case. Let me throw that up there. There you go. Uh, he says uh, it, his it's his awesome thing of the week. Uh, the power bear battery case he got for his iPhone SE. It's his first such case, and it's pretty swank. He says. Plus, he can use it as a power bank, so it's pretty cool. So adds a little bit more life to him for that. Um, yeah, and this is like five five C five S five SE. I mean, th- these are still perfectly fine phones. Um, she had a little bit of shield protection and everything, so it, it kind of adds to it. it has a 24 month warranty. Um, it says three times the extra battery power. Because these things, again, like people were pretty okay on those five Cs. I'm surprised how many in five S's. five Cs and five S's I see like and on SEs. the train in the elevator at work. Mm-hmm. Like there's like I look at their phone, I'm like. What is that tiny little thing? Did someone? Did they pick up the new Palm? But they don't want anything bigger. But I mean, really, like, go pick up a 3GS. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, how did I do this? How did me with my big hands 
deal with that little tiny phone, right? Mm-hmm. I, it's, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. So did, back to the the we were talking. You were talking about a train. Did mm-hmm. you see what? And and interacting with Microsoft, did you see in two weeks what? Amazon's going to be pulling over. No. They're going to be pulling over Apple Music. To Amazon? Yes. What? So you're going to be able to use your Apple Music subscription over any of their speakers. That works perfectly for me with my Google Music subscription, (laughs) which is why I bought a Google Home. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And it's funny because I have Apple Music and I'm like, well, it's no big deal. I can just... For the quality of like an echo, I can put my phone down and turn the phone up and I get about the same quality of sound, mm-hmm. which we have we have the home pod as well. But I don't know. I'm I feel like I'm gonna be getting a, a few more dots just for that same type of I thing. I am perfectly happy with my Google Home, like for like music quality here mm-hmm. in, in the office. I mean it's it's right above my desk, so I'm gonna hear it mm-hmm. right. Um, it's good thing. It's a good thing to throw on either that, or I throw it to the Chromecast. If we're like, you know, have a gathering here and I want to throw music on. Right. Um, it usually goes to the TV to be honest. Um, so it's, it's kind of nice. It, 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 it fits really nicely for, you know, covering this sized office, I guess. Um, I, I, man, maybe soon I'll have internet at home and I'll, I'll start rigging things up in there too. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Hey, guys, also want to give a shout out again, our uh, good friends as part of the Yajagoff holiday, uh, holiday gift guide over there. Um, our friends over at the Cora Life Eatery up there on McKnight Road. You go check it out there. Healthy never tasted so good. Uh, these guys um, have a pretty cool thing going on up there as I'm pulling up the website for you guys on video. Um, but, uh, Core Life Eatery is, uh, up at the block, the block at Northway, uh, brings clean, healthy, and, uh, great tasting fu- foods every day, uh, with hearty bowls featuring greens, grains, and bone broths. All ingredients are free of GMOs, trans fats, artificial colors, sweeteners, and other uh, artificial additives. It's fresh, fit, and fine for any time of day especially during the holiday season shop till you drop and make them your eating shop <laughs> shop till you drop and make them your eating stop. I'm going to work on that. Hey, you know, it takes me a while to get those, those going, uh, visit them at uh, block at Northway in the lower level and find out more information at core And I know we have some people, um, all over the country that might be listening to this. They have multiple locations in Florida, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, um, out in Northern California, and so much more. Go check it out, corelifeeatery.com, and uh, eat a little healthier. As they say, healthy never tasted so good uh, with Core Life Eatery. Again, part of the uh, yeah, Jagoff holiday gift guide. Go over there to yajagoff.com and uh, find out more about uh, some of these great things uh, going on. I, I'm learning about things. I, did, I didn't know about Pittsburgh things or, uh, or this uh, – uh, Cora Life Eatery uh, going in here, and uh, I don't go out to get up the McKnight all that often. Hell, I just wandered up there recently and found a Lego store, Chilla. So I still want to go there. <laughs> I haven't been there yet. We need to have, we need to do an awesome cast field trip someday. That would be we should we could fun. go there and we can go visit the people at the Tesla store. And ask I've them seen the Tesla. Questions. I've seen this. I've been in Ross Park and seen the Tesla store. I've never. I haven't been there since the Lego store mm-hmm. opened. Uh, they, they got a lot of cool things. That is like. Man, that is definitely the probably the highest end mall we have up there. So a lot of interesting stuff going up there at uh, in the up McKnight Road. So, all right, we have a couple of cool things going on here. Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and more importantly, Firefly. I got a message from uh, Laura in the office in the back here, or not a message. I, I saw it on Facebook. So I said, uh, "So I finished Firefly for the uh, millionth time. Now what do I do?" Uh, <laughs> This is part of this. These are all coming to Facebook Watch. And I was listening to a little bit on Core Killers. They were talking about the situation with this. So it's a lot of the Whedonverse stuff, uh, Buffy, Angel, and Firefly, all on Facebook Watch, all for free. Um, it's coming to them as part of a deal with 20th Century Fox. It's every episode of the classic programs uh, will be made available. And also, it's they're going to um, include or be a part of 
uh, uh, Facebook's recently announced a watch party feature. So again, this is something where something will come on, like uh, for instance, uh, according to this article on Engadget, um, they were doing a Buffy the Vampire Slayer watch party taking place uh, on that day at, at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, and I think those are going to include members, or maybe that was just the thing they were talking about. Um, so basically at like 6 p.m., they're going to show like an episode of Buffy and you all watch together. This was a feature on the Xbox 360 I used to love with Netflix. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> I missed that. But here, so on Netflix, you like started up a right. group. Right. Then you all launched Netflix together and it kind of kept you in sync. Yeah. I'm guessing that's the same way this worked. Like you can pick this, your show, pick this, your episode. So the more they talked about this and there being marathons and appointment viewing and, and you watch an old episode together, it made me think about how Twitch is doing the Poke like Pokemon was a big thing. I was I just I was just playing Pokemon at the beginning of the episode last last week when I was setting up. Because mm-hmm. that's what was on Twitch and I had the app on here and auto launches. And they did the same thing with Bob Ross. They did the same thing with ah oh, geez, what other T V shows have they had over the years? But that's kind of time based. Like you have to jump into that while they're doing it. Yes. And, With and f- this seems to be the same way. So you can't, it can't be just me, you, a couple friends, and we spin it up uh, uh, at our leisure on our own and mm-hmm. on our own time. Or can we do that too? I don't know. I don't know. Like, can I go watch the Buffy? This, this episodes? seems very specifically because they're talking about Buffy and Angel. I think you can go watch them, but they're not going to be necessarily uh, uh and i have not we could also dive into it and see how it is behaving since we do have facebook on our phones and stuff but i don't want to mess with the stream um let's see what does happen here it's because i mean the, the, you have a version of this feature as it stands because like uh wwe is doing a mix match challenge i see that um TNA has some video going, right? When Mix Max Challenge happens and it goes live, it's actually live. It's live, live. It's, I mean, when we're, this, this is something that people are watching together, right? I, I think the big change is this is something pre recorded. Um, when you upload videos, you have a premiere thing. Like, we can record this video that we're doing right now, post it, and YouTube's saying you should do the same thing too, or can do the same thing too. Tell everybody, hey, we're going to launch the next episode of Awesome Cast at you know, 8 p.m. on Wednesday. And then we get in the chat room with them and talk with the audience. That seems to be that version of this feature. Um, and actually, as I drop into Facebook Watch, I'm not seeing anything about this, like at least on the surface. I'm going to look up Firefly and see what's up. Well, I can go to the Buffy. So how does this work? So I'm in... Like, cause they're showing Facebook oh, wait, watch, and they're showing like likes and th- like the likes and loves, and it's gonna start playing on the TV. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm going into the episode. It it's kind of has a different um, setup here, um, but there's no doesn't appear to be. Yeah, you can write comments on the videos and see other people's comments that they've posted, but it's kind of treated like another video, mostly. I, I think it's interesting that you can see, like, w- when you have these videos, are, so there's usually a live that tells you, like, hey, there's there's five, ten people living right now, right? But, I don't know, something to play with, and maybe we can talk about it a little later, right, Chilla? Yes, definitely. So, we, should, we should do some watch party. Well, if we can get it to work at our at our leisure. Yeah, yeah. Like, can we can we get together and watch something? So, yeah. uh, Chilla, what do you want to talk about out of this list here? What do I want to talk about out of the list? So just a warning to you. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Come on. We get a, like hangouts. Like three times a year I'm getting told that hangouts is going away. What it, but it's weird though, because the, I've seen like a lot of posts about this over the last probably forty eight hours, and Google actually issued a statement. Um Hangouts for the Enterprise? Like if you're a because you could G buy sweet customer, right? Because you could they've buy. They've been migrating those people to meet, okay, chat and meet, okay. But then there's been rumblings that, as a whole, Hangouts will be going away in 2020. Okay, I have some time. You have, yeah, you have. I have time. some time. I don't think it's I, gonna be. I don't think this is like next Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah. 
which remember when they used to do all their updates on like Tuesday nights and we'd always get like hosed for the oh, show. Oh yeah, yeah. But like, why can't we connect? Why is it? Why is Hangout done in, down in the middle of our show? Who knows? And we also we were trying to stream to YouTube, and that's when that would that connection would would get killed too. So it says it says here. No decisions have been made about when Hangouts will be shut down. Mm-hmm. And they're saying current Hangouts users will be upgraded to Hangouts Chat and Meet. So it's one of those, I'm going to log into hangouts.google.com, and it's like, hey, we are now this. Just like like I was telling you before the show, like we, we did a podcast with somebody from Lucky Barton, and we couldn't get in with the software we usually use. So they sent me a Skype business call is what the email said, but I clicked on the email, and suddenly we're connecting with Microsoft to Link. Well, so Link was the predecessor to Skype for Business enterprise server oh you're telling you tell me that they didn't update <laughs> yeah so yeah i can't remember when it was it was sometime in 2014 or 15 um skype so link link server there was an it was kind of the link client was upgraded to skype for business um and it was just kind of an overlay on top of the old link 2013 <laughs> client um and then there was a skype for business server edition 2015 i think that came mm-hmm. out um so yeah you're just run. they're running an older they're running the yeah. predecessor yeah. well here's the other thing is it's connections with google voice and stuff like brian's saying what are you talking about they still have google voice up and running they seem to stop programs but never to close them down um uh, missy missy also also saying that uh what are you talking about i i go search for uh, google hangouts by looking up google chat so. <laughs> <laughs> they sure did x they sure did get rid of reader though remember that right, fiasco right. uh partner saying that his company updated from link early last year so and again we were going through another company you know uh so i mean considering what they do there i'm sure security they're not going to be fast to update at that level yeah so and that and that's usually typically not cheap no no especially um, something on the scale that they probably are right right so all right now that you've you've scared me about hangout give me something that's actually awesome out of this so pokemon <gasps> now you caught me attention by the end of the year Mm-hmm. Which means within like the next Wait, weeks, weeks, weeks away, <laughs> weeks away from less now. than a month. Yes, we will be allowed to have player versus allowed. player battles. Allowed. We'll never get this show off the ground on time because you and me will be player battery. Now, by the now, way, what, by the way, I, we need to trade some Pokemon before you leave. Okay. <laughs> Why does that never happen? I can never get into like the. You, you, I've, I've traded Pokemons with like three people. My wife, my brother, and Sean Phoenix. That's it. And that was at, like, at a wrestling show. Um, well, but why don't you send me gifts anymore? Because, you know. I don't have enough gifts to send out. Uh, I send them to Missy and then a couple other people. Missy sends then, me a gift every day. Yeah, well, she's going to interesting places lately. I have not. I, you, know, you know why I have, don't have gifts? Because I'm not traveling and I'm not driving a lift. You have you have like two spots right here. I know, here. but I feel weird just sitting there and just just taking and giving everybody Beachview Presbyterian churches all day. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> because here's the thing is like part of this player versus player and oh. I'm not up on my Pokemon I'm going to turn it on right now. I'm going to turn it on right now so I can get some Beachview Presbyterian church gifts. <laughs> I'm not up on my like stages of friendship in Pokemon Go, mm-hmm. but they're saying you're going to have to be like best friends and or ultra friends i became ultra friends and did the big uh so XP which update. which one's ultra and which one's best uh, ultra is like the full five hearts i think okay so, i don't know my pokemon's updating right now they just they just pushed an update that they require you so, I'm so what, on what are we what are we i don't know we're like we're like around three or something well, we'll we'll figure it out. We're we'll on our way to sort it. We're we're like three and a half. All right, listen, listen. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna send you more friends. I'm gonna send you more Beachview Presbyterian churches, and we're gonna level up here, and everything's gonna be great, and we're going to um, then end that friendship when we're fighting each other uh, in Pokemon at the end of the year. So oh, you did. Send we have me a plan. Again. See, but see, you're just not opening them. Now here's you're the funny part: is for the reason why I've been waiting for you to send me a gift is so I could unload all your scars are ugly. 
because we had the conversation about it. And I'm like, finally, someone I can give it to won't be offended. <laughs> And I can get rid of this all your scars are ugly gift. Listen, I've not been I've not been big on the gift train lately. I've been really sad because some of these some of these um goals that they lay for us. Um oh there you are. I'm gonna I'm gonna gift you right now. Um some of these goals that they lay lay for us and the in the challenges have got me really like depressed. Like I haven't seen a dark Pokemon since Halloween. Uh stuff like that. So anyways, nobody cares about my their Pokemon. Okay, there's probably a few of you, but the rest of you are like, what the hell is happening? The US Army is going to use Microsoft's HoloLens for combat combat missions. Um they were already using the controllers from the Xbox. <laughs> they this, is... Were. this is just the next step up, right? <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, it makes sense. Um, I, I hope they're not using it for anything that needs any uh, peripheral vision for this. Um, <laughs> but, anyways, uh, the, uh, the HoloLens has always been already been used for a number of armies for training, they say, and it's about to get to the next level, according to uh, a gadget article. Um, the U.S. Army has awarded Microsoft a $480 million contract to supply the headset for live combat missions as well as training, according to Bloomberg. Uh, they say that the, gov the, the, the government description is to, quote, inc increase lethality by enhancing the ability to detect, decide, and engage before the enemy. Did you get all that, Chilla? I did. So I'm guessing you're gonna get you're gonna wear these things around, and if you think someone's gonna draw a gun on you, it's gonna fire up like an alert and say, "Shoot now! Shoot now!" Like I like in my vision, it's like it's like Terminator, where you see hostile, not hostile. You know, uh, I I don't know. Maybe I guess, which to me means they probably still have to develop that part. Yeah, this will be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, especially you know, it's, it's it's got a short you know side vision. By the way, I sent you a Pokemon gift already. Um, <laughs> I sent you one. I know. I, I just took it and, and sent you one. So it is happening. Um, and it's out there. Google Glass is out there too. It'll be interesting to see what develops out of this. Um, interested in this. Well, here first, let me give let me throw a let me throw an ad out there. And we'll uh, talk a little bit more about a couple more stories before we get out of here. I want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway. This has been supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza for a good while here. Uh, locations right here in the neighborhood of Beachview, Carnegie, West End, and PNC Park. It helps feed us. That's what, that's what gets chilling here every other week. So you can get the pizza on, right? The deliciousness. The deliciousness. He went, he went on the pizza run with me tonight. Yes, I so. did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Thank you so much, Slice on Broadway. Go check them out. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. And check out more at sliceonbroadway.com or pgh underscore slice on the Twitter. And if you're from somewhere other than Pittsburgh, hit them up on there and and uh, ask for, again, we had this thing where um, if you have a Broadway in your town, let them know so they know they need to put a slice on Broadway in your town, wherever that may be across the country. Help the expansion. Obviously, they're doing it here in town. Let's get them out of town. Let's, let's uh, get a slice in your. Well, hopefully they stay in. Hopefully they. Well, yeah, don't leave. But I mean, expand. expansion, expansion, yes. a westward expansion for our friends out there. All right. Anyways, um, <laughs> I say a couple. Of, let's touch on uh, one or two really quick ones here, and we'll roll out uh, for the day because I got some wrestling to talk about here as well. Let's see. Do you do you know? The Pixel, so I, I noticed you added the mm -hmm. Google's call screen I'm screen very interested transcripts. in this. Is that all Pixel owners, or is it starting with the Pixel 3? Do you know any details? Other than what is in the article, no. Including Sheila. older devices as well as the Pixel 3. Hold on. we got to ask Kraus about this. This is, this is a Kraus question. So, so Kraus owns a Pixel. What is the general idea here? Um, the, 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 the article says um, Google's call screening transcripts are going to roll out to P P Pixel owners. So th this is something that uh, they were talking about on like a Twitter or something recently about um, Google Assistant will screen calls um, to let you know if they're worth answering. According to Engadget, uh, Pixel owners have reported that uh, uh, call screen transcripts are starting to reach their devices, including older devices, uh, as, the, uh, as well as the Pixel 3. Uh, if you check your recent calls in your phone app, uh, choose call details, you'll find a see transcript option if you have the feature. If you do, you can review 
uh, what a mysterious caller said and decide whether or not it's worth a follow-up. So this is the thing, like this is a Google feature, right? Like I, I've heard where you can say so-and-so is not receiving calls from unknown callers. Please leave your name or something, right? It, yeah, it's like the the assistant. The and assistant the, and, will say, hi, the person you're calling is using a screening service from Google and we'll get a copy of this conversation. And I can do this with my Google Voice as well. Yeah, go ahead and say your name and why you're calling. Yeah. And then I, I think if the if you're watching the transcript, you can actually... I thought you were able to pick up the call mid... So basically the transcript is happening in real time as the person is calling in. That's what I thought. It's not just like, I mean, everybody has voicemail. Anyone yeah. can say, leave a message. But it's like, it's, like a, it's like a pre-voicemail, right? It's like, yeah. will you say, hey, this is Jim from Prime, by Prime Star. Uh, you know, and you're just like, oh yeah, <laughs> hey Jim, hey, what's up? You know, instead of waiting for the thing to go through, right? Yeah. So. Um, no, I'm super interested in this. Yeah, because we're all getting those calls. <laughs> we're all getting those calls that we don't what, want. Yeah, and I actually switched. I switched voicemail services. Really? I'm using. I use Umail. I I I started using Umail years ago, mm -hmm. um, because I was on a jailbroken iPhone on T-Mobile, and on T-Mobile I couldn't. You couldn't get your voicemail necessarily to work with the iphone when it was because t-mobile didn't have all the hookups for that so um when i switched to at&t i just kept it but you mail <laughs> i pulled up into your university uh 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 you mail <laughs> as, as the first hit oh, that didn't work y out so well y-o-u-m-a-i oh you mail yeah. as in you point the finger at you mail yeah so they were they they offered transcription services before um, Apple did, mm -hmm. and now they do smart blocking. They do smart blocking. They do blacklists. They will actually, if it's a known scammer number, it will actually never ring your phone. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been using that for a while, but I would actually like this better than if it could screen. So I could pick up a call if Start needed. today by entering your phone number. Hmm. Sign up for free. So what do you actually have to pay for at a certain point? Plans and pricing? Like at what point does it kick in? Um, I think if you want to do some of the more advanced uh, spam blocking. We're talking about $5 a month, $10 a month for professional plus yeah. some professional versions. Um, professional ca call handling. Uh, unified cell home work voicemail. So that, that's it's worthwhile if you're like if it's such a big problem for you. Like, but that, I'm still I'm just using sense. the free service. And okay, it's working well. Really? Yeah. Okay. I like it because they they they're keeping a log of all of the different phone numbers from scammers and whatnot. So on there it'll say like, this is a. Um, insurance scam or this is i mean the different different types of scams so <laughs> this is a, a good question because i've wondered this too brian's asking is it possible to delete the phone app off of your phone I, isn't I, it <laughs> is it is, is there is there a point where is that one can, of the apps you can you be can? on a cell can you be on a cell phone from apple or google and just not receive calls is there a way to do that i really want that way to do that other than I don't know. See, so here's my problem. I can I have it set up already that it will not call through on Do Not Disturb. Now, here's also the problem. I throw on Do Not Disturb on my phone. It's on my watch, too. Mm -hmm. And that blocks everything. I still want messages. I don't want phone calls. How do I block just phone calls no matter what? Like, I am playing a game and a, and a spammer calls. And you don't want to be bothered at all, but you want to get all your I don't texts. want a phone call to come through and interrupt anything I'm doing on this device at all. That's the question. That's your homework for assignment for next week, Chilla. You could call forward everything. Mm, just call forward everything to Google. Yeah. Mm. That's a guess. That's a good question. Uh, Brian just wants it off his phone. Like I can see him just not. I mean... 
if you needed to call somebody, you could use like your Google Voice or some other <laughs> off your phone. Ever, never. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way that I can think that you would be able to like actually just block the, the calls. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see. I, of course, there's, there's services. There's some other services through like your, um, your, like the phone companies, I guess, right? Uh, that they were talking about on one of the shows this week. Like if you go to like a, I think Verizon or T-Mobile, where they like yeah. they will do it themselves. So like they have a, they have kind of a blacklist, and it's just like, well, why aren't we doing this already, right? Like, uh, but worth looking into. There's there's a few options out there that try to help out with that. Oh, hey, you know who's also very helpful? Our friend Alex Cars. He's been in the chat room all night. But also he does a lot of, he does a lot more than that. He's uh, putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print to digital products. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. You can choke up, check out uh, alexandercars.com and alexcars.media to get started. He's done a lot of great work with us, including help us with the uh, initial launch of the IndieWrestling.us uh, site and logo as well he actually set that up for us uh he's done some dvds uh covers and uh, some t-shirts from uh, for a lot of indie wrestling guys and also he has some stuff for occupyprowrestling.com that's some really great stuff and also if you go over there and hit up his uh shop uh, he has a lot of great charity stuff for uh, some injured wrestlers um so go check that out and of course go check out our friend alexcars.media that's alex a-l-e-x k-a-h-r-s dot media for more information thank you to him for supporting the show here make sure you guys support him back uh this week it is geez what is going on this week we have of course pittsburgh current will be joining us thursday morning uh we had a great discussion last week talking about kswa wrestling that was happening here in town um and beyond that other than wrestling going on i think that's about it we're um gearing up for some stuff in two weeks time will be our awesome cast end of the year episode um where we were gonna i <laughs> probably will not get on nearly as many people as i did last year but uh we will uh have a few people on hopefully get some familiar faces back on the show and uh, uh look at our predictions for last year and uh, make some wild predictions for this next year. That's usually a good time to see how far off the mark we were usually. Right, Chilla? That is very true. So we'll see where we're at with that. In the meantime, everybody go check out uh, ChillaTech.net and Chilla on the Twitter. John to Chilla on the Facebook. We should do a mid-year review just to kind of calibrate where we're at and see if we want to re- Reforecast. <laughs> well, that makes it less fun when we're way <laughs> off the mark and whatever didn't happen in the first month. So, yeah. Anyways, and of course, check out SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great podcasts. Like I mentioned, our friends at Pittsburgh Current, um, Fishing Without Bait. We uh, were telling some Buddha stories this week uh, as well as our friends Thrifty. Actually, Thrifty, we're going to be, I think it's next week. That's the other thing going on. Um I have to check the calendar, but I believe next Thursday the Thrifty Holiday Extravaganza is going to be happening as well. Um, yes, the, the the Thrifty Holiday Special will be at 8 p.m. on December the 13th. And as I'm going through, I'm wondering what else I might have missed here. Um, also on the 12th, you know, LinkedIn is doing a local Pittsburgh um, connecting humans beyond on online profiles thing. I decided I wanted to get um, back into my LinkedIn. I've been ignoring it for a while, Chilla, and this came up. Uh, I believe Katie and I will be um, attending that event. So if you guys see the details out there for that, um, look for that as well. Uh, Comic Book Pit will be – I'm remembering all the pro- all the stuff that's going on now, Chilla. Comic Book Pit is going to be here in studio recording the next two episodes this Thursday at 7 p.m. So go check out their Facebook so you see when they go online for that. And uh, shout out to our friends at the Scare House. Creepy Christmas is this weekend, Chilla. And uh, then a sorg might be getting creepy Friday night. That's super cool. I don't think I'm going to make it this year, but I know, I know, it's like that little one weekend, and then and that's so hard on a holiday. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what makes it tough. I still have shopping to do. If you have time, if you have time, you know, swing out to Edna. The basement and the regular um, uh, event is open. Um, they the tickets are probably going to go fast for this thing, so keep an eye out for that. And um, wrestling this weekend, Elizabeth and West Newton. Uh, we'll be around for that as well. Thank you, everybody, and our awesome audience. Please have an awesome week, 
And thank you, Producer Missy on the West Coast. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.